Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I hope you all are, all are all making the best out of this blessed Ramadan. SubhanAllah, we have another event today, and I am your host, <laughs> inshallah. Um, I want to welcome you all for another session for um, Nisa Helpline's Ramadan series, our um, Overcoming Life's Challenges with Allah today with sister Abir Anis. She is a business graduate and she used to be a high school teacher and taught business and economics. But ever since she pursued her religious education, um, the only subject she enjoys, uh, um, mashallah, uh, tabarakallah, <laughs> is um, now Quran So and Sunnah. Um, she is inspired by the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, and just really quickly, I would like to share um, some hadith that um, just for a reminder for today and, you know, even after Ramadan, inshallah. So please forgive me <laughs> of my Arabic. I am not as, um, you know, mashallah, um, as perfect as Sister Abir. Or I'm not a hafiz or anything, a hafiza, so please forgive me for that. But I'm going to try my best. Um, so, Jairukum man ta'allama and the best of you is who learns the Quran and teaches it. You know what? Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> give me one second. But that is our first like hadith of the day. So just um, the best of you is one who learns the Quran and teaches it. Um, so that's um, basically what's our inspiration for today. So um, I'm sorry for that rocky start, Sister Abir. But um, today she will be going through verses 155 um, from the Surah Al-Baqarah. The session will describe the five trials people go through in their lifetime and how they can live happily after them. And we will learn how to see the light after difficulties and also how we can help and support those in need. Um, so without further, to do, further ado, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give the floor to Sister Abir and, and um, we will start our session today, inshallah. And I'm so sorry for butchering <laughs> the hadith. I did not practice before this session, but um, Sister Abir, you can go on ahead and begin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's okay. Jazakum ala khairan kathira alij. Um, uh, so the hadith you were mentioning is Rasulullah sallallahu said, the best of you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. You see, we all want to be the best, right? We all love to be the best of the best. And someone tells you, oh, you're the best, right? There's always this competition where we want to be the best, right? But people have different criteria. Not everyone really, not everyone really thinks you are the best. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine if Allah and his Rasul says that you are the best, then you are really the best, right? So, uh, so that was the hadith, and uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us the best. And uh, let me just pull up the slides here. Alhamdulillah. Can you all see the screen okay? So inshallah, today we'll be talking about some challenges that we all face, some difficulties that we all face in our lives, right? And how we can overcome those challenges and why, I mean, many times this question comes to our mind that why me, right? So is there any guidance? Is there any guidance given to us in Quran and Sunnah? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to say about it? Because we all question, right? Why, these, why this test? Why am I tested this way and not the other? And why me? So the let's get some guidance from Quran that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has told us in his book. Because you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He's the one who gave us this life, who has sent on us on this world for a limited time, and then eventually we have to meet him. And he has not created us and left us to wander around. He has sent guidance for us. He sent a menu. He sent the Quran, which we then pick. We find out the answers to everything, to all our questions, to all our worries. And Ramadan is the month of Quran. Why do we celebrate Ramadan? Why do we, why do we in Ramadan, we attend Taraweeh, we recite the Quran, when we listen to the Quran? Ramadan, one of the main reasons is Ramadan of Ramadan is that Quran was revealed in this month. So Ramadan is Shahrul Quran, right? So inshallah today we will um, see some of these answers from in the light of Surah Al-Baqarah. Some verses from Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay? So are you all ready? Yeah? Okay, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahi rahman rahim Nahmudu wa nasalli ala al-lasuhi kareem. Amma ba'd. Fa'audhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahi rahman rahim رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين امين so we learn in surah al-baqarah in ayah number 155 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala nabluwannakum bi shay'in min al-khawf wal-ju' wa naqs min al-amwal wal-anfus والانفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الله سبحانه وتعالى says ولا نبلونكم and we will surely definitely test you who all human beings we will definitely surely test you there's no doubt about it bala is a very severe test right ولا نبلونكم and if you know some arabic kum is you all without any exception every single one of us will be tested right Bishayin, with Bishayin, so with something, with some trial, Bishayin, little bit, meaning it's not going to be all bad, right? We will be tested with some of what? Minan khawf, fear, right? So these are five tests that are mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test each and every human being. Some may have test of fear, some may have test of hunger, some may have test of loss of wealth, some may have test of loss of lives and food. We'll see each one of them. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a promise here that you will definitely be tested. Life is not going to be easy. You will definitely face some trials. And what kind of trials? They are mentioned here. Masaib al-Khamsa. Five trials. So let's see the first one mentioned here. Fear. What is fear? Fear is, you know, when you expect something harmful. Or you're afraid of people. Or you're afraid of natural disaster. Or you're afraid of some virus catching. Right? So you're experiencing fear in your life. So what kind of fears do you experience? Nowadays, we all are experiencing fear of safety, right? We all want to be safe. That's why we are told not to socialize and stay in our homes. And we should take that advice seriously, right? So you see, we all face some kind of test. It could be on individual level. For example, you have your own fears. Some people have fear of heights. Some people have fear of driving tests. Or, you know, some people are afraid of, afraid of sleeping. They're afraid of nightmares. Some people are afraid of being bullied, right? Some people are afraid of getting into a car accident. So everyone has different fears. And then there's, that's their test. And sometimes these fears could be on a global scale. Everyone is facing this fear. So it's just a test. So what should we do in these times of fear? Because we will definitely be tested. Either one of these things, sometimes multiple things from this list. So what is the way out? Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua. 
Ask Allah to calm down your fears. And be hopeful. Remind yourself that no matter how bad the situation is, it will be over soon. I will get out of it quickly, inshallah. So don't let the fear take control of you. Don't let that fear dominate you. Because you see, there's, a one, there's only one thing that is constant in this life. And that is change. Which is always happening. So we'll definitely test you with something of fear. And then what is the next thing on the list? And well, jua and hunger. So when you're hungry, what happens? With the all day you're fasting and you're hungry, perhaps you missed your suhoor also. So when you're hungry, your real self comes out, isn't it? So, so Allah will test us of hunger also. And it could be for, because of various reasons. Sometimes you have food, but you don't get the chance to eat. Maybe you had a, such a busy day that you were not able to have food. Or sometimes you have food, but you have some allergies and you're not able to consume certain types of food. We know of people that they are not able to eat everything. They get some allergic reaction. Or sometimes the, the test of hunger could be that you don't have enough money to afford food. Right? So hunger is also a test. That's why if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, that alhamdulillah our fridge and freezer, our houses is full of food, our house is full of food, we should look out for people who don't have that luxury, who don't have food available, and they really sleep every night hungry. So if Allah has blessed us with this, and other people are still facing this test of hunger, we should support them. We should look out for those people and not ignore them. So we will definitely test you with something of how fear, the thing about the fears that you have in your life. Fear of future. Fear of future. Fear of unknown. Whether I'll get a job after my graduation or not. Whether I'll be able to succeed in my school or not. We have different fears. And then jaw, hunger. And the third thing in the list is the loss of wealth. Naqs is the reduction. So when something gets less, so you had something, but then it becomes less. So shortage of wealth, poverty. Maybe in summers you were working, you had an income, but then finally everything shut down and there came a point in your life that you have, you don't have any money, right? And you have to pay for your tuition, you have to pay for your phone bill and you don't have money. All go, goes away, loss of job. So we all face this. So the point is that don't dwell on your loss. Move on. Think about all the other blessings that you have. So we will definitely test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, while unfus, and loss of life. We will test you with loss of life. Naqsim min al-amwal and wal anfus. Death. Maybe there's a death in your family of your loved one. That's also a test, right? Maybe there's a sickness. Or maybe there's a disease or some sickness in your own body. Maybe your knees hurt going up and down. Maybe there's an injury. So reduction of people, manaqsim in al-amwal and reduction in lives, people, either by death or disease or sickness in the body. Or maybe loss of friends. Maybe sometimes, you know, it happens, for example, you're very close to some people. And then suddenly you, you're not getting along with them anymore. So you thought some friends who were your best friends once upon a time now, they're not your friends anymore, right? And you feel lonely and you feel hurt. So how to deal with this kind of test? So these situations, you see, these situations can push us to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To ask Allah to give you better friends. 
And you know, we have been taught a very beautiful dua in hadith, which is Allahumma yassirli jaleesan salihan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate for me a good friend, a righteous friend. Jaleesan salihan. Because everything happened with the izin of Allah. Everything happens with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These tests come in our life for a reason. Right? Not even a leaf falls, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of it. It happens with the izin permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when these tests come in our life, when we are fearful, when we are tested with hunger, or naqsimil and amwal, loss of wealth, or reduction of wealth, or loss of life, losing a loved one, or not, not having enough friends. So remember that if we, if Allah is taking people away from you, Allah is also bringing you new people. So stop looking at your loss only. Allah is giving you better people and new, new friends perhaps. But we only, if we're only looking at the closed door, then we cannot appreciate all the other open doors. All the other friendships that are made waiting for us out there. And the fifth test is what tamarat and fruits. What is fruits? How are we tested with fruits? Tamara in Arabic means produce. It's a product of, of a produce. So it could be grain, vegetation, anything that you grow. The so product of your produce, profits, right? So what tamarat will tend test you with samarat, with fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that you are definitely going to test, you're definitely going to have these tests in your life. Samarat, children, you could be tested by your children. You could be tested by anything that you invested in. You were supposed to gain profit and you, you face a loss over there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that you will definitely go through these five tests. And sometimes you see, you see people around you and you start comparing yourself. Say, look at me, poor me, my challenges, my life and my test. Look at, my, look at my friend. Look at my sister. She has no test in her life. But you know, remind yourself of this ayah. That every single person is tested. We are sent on this earth for being tested. Maybe their tests are according to them. Their test may not seem anything big to you, but for them, that may be a biggest challenge in their life that they are facing. And for you, your test is according to your capacities. Because la yukallifu lahu nafsan illa husaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't burden a soul more than his capacity. If you're going through, through some tough times, if you're going through some difficulties in your life, or if you had some past bad experiences, you know, it came your way because you could handle it. Whenever we are going through tough times or challenging times, we should remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't burden us all more than his capacity. It was definitely in your capacity. That's why you were challenged and you were burdened by that test in your life. And always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna yusra. With difficulty comes ease. And scholars say that because his eye is repeated twice, so with every difficulty, there's double ease, two eases. So next time, you know, when you're in a difficulty, maybe you're driving, God forbid, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of you safe, and your car breaks down, right? So it is a difficult situation, but always think about this eye and ask yourself, what are the two eases do I have at this point? Yes, I am in a very difficult situation, right? My car is not working. But is there any ease that Allah has made it around me? And I'm sure you can think of so many eases. Perhaps the area you're, you are in at, the area you are, your car broke down, you know, it's a residential area, you are not on a highway, perhaps, or maybe you ha still have access to phone, you can call someone, maybe you have CAA membership, you can call them right away, right? You could phone a friend, phone a family member. So you could think of, all the eases, and that's when, um, then that's when the believer becomes grateful and become positive. And Allah says, "Wabashir is sabirin to give good tidings to the patient." So you see, difficulty is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to gain something. 
And what are you gaining? It's an opportunity to gain good news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will definitely test each one of us with these tests. Some are tested more, some are tested less, some are tested in one way, some are tested in multiple ways. Some are tested in all different ways. But then when you are tested and you are patient, then there is good news. Babashir is sabirin. So give good news, glad tidings to the patient ones. They have gained something that is far better. They have gained the reward. They will get something better from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, it's just like when you pay for your phone, you buy an expensive phone. Do you ever think that, oh, I lost so much money. I paid $500 for the phone and I have lost. Do you think that, oh, I have lost $500? We never say that we have lost $500. We are actually proud to tell people because it shows actually how valuable that thing is that you have gained. By giving that money, you feel proud that, okay, I could afford this phone. And it's so valuable that it costed me this much, right? We don't consider, consider it a loss because we are getting something in return. So whenever we are tested, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us in certain ways, then we are gaining. And what are we gaining? We are, we are gaining the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that reward is only for the patient people. And what is patience? What is the definition of patience? Does everyone, anyone know the definition of patience? What is patience? Patience is at the first stroke of the calamity. Sadhmat al-Ula, Rasulullah told us in the hadith, we learned that sabr is at the first stroke of the calamity. So you hear a bad news, you hear a sad news, you suffer a loss, and then instantly, you are patient. And the next ayah Allah Samata mentions, who, who are these people? Ulaika. Who are these people? Alladheena idha asabathum musibatun qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiyoon. Wa bashiri sabineen. So good news for these people. And who are these people? Alladheena when? Idha asabathum musibatun. When that is disaster strikes them. Paulu, they say, what do they say? Ouch! Oh my God! What slips out of their mouth? Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiyoon. Who are these patient ones? What does a patient look like? Patients look like whenever alladina ida asabat hum musiba when the musiba strikes them, right? When the difficulty hits them. Then what do they say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyam. Inna lillahi, meaning we, we belong to Allah. Indeed, we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah owns us. You see, when you own something, then you can do anything with it. What, you, then you can do anything you like with that thing, right? When you own something, can you do with it whatever you like? Whatever you like? So if you have a pen, it's your property. You, can, you will say, it's my pen, I can do whatever... I want with it. Who are you to criticize? Right? So when we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when a person realizes this that Allah owns me He can give something to me and He can take it away from me. So inna lillahi So this statement you know when you're suffering or when you when the disaster or some something bad happens in your life and you say inna lillahi that indeed, I belong to Allah. So this statement is the acceptance of that decision. Acceptance of the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows that you are happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see, when a person accepts the situation they are in, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them contentment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them content, happy, and also gives them comfort. So, alladheena idha asabathu musibat, musibat, whenever this disaster strikes them, they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyoon. Indeed, we belong to Allah. Allah is our Rabb. They have positive, they have positive thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is my Rabb, He is my creator, He is my Khalik, Malik, Mudabbir. He is the one who has created me. He is my owner. He is my sustainer. So, whatever is coming from Allah, 
can never be bad for me. There's some khair in it. There's some wisdom in it, which I may not be able to understand from my limited mind. I'm not able to see the wisdom behind it because Allah is Al-Hakim. He's all wise. Allah knows and I do not know. So they say, Inna Lillahi. We belong to Allah. And not only this, Wa Inna Ilayhi, Wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiyon. And we are going to back and we are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually. We are going to die. Raja we will be returning to him. So you see, in this, in the first statement, inna lillahi, there is acceptance of Allah's decision. And in the second statement, there is hope. There is hope of reward from Allah. That in the hereafter, I will get the reward of my suffering. Because I belong to him. I accept it. And I'm also going back to him. And he will reward me for my sufferings. He will reward me for my patience. Do you see this statement is so deep? When do we say this statement? When have we heard this statement? Usually when someone dies, right? But we're learning in this ayah that when any difficulty, if you're faced by any difficulty, any of these tests, any of the Masai al khamsa, what do you say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. So in this statement, this statement is so vast, there is submission in this statement. You're submitting to the will of Allah. You are not questioning. You're submitting to the will of Allah. Because Allah knows and you do not know. Allah's knowledge is much more than our knowledge. Our knowledge as compared to the knowledge of Allah is not even a drop of water in an ocean. So when we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun, there's submission in it. With that comes contentment. And there's hope. Hope for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person who submits instantly, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them in the hereafter. And you see, every servant of Allah is tested. Even prophets are tested. So we should not feel that, oh, I'm not a righteous person, that's why I'm going through this test. No. Whether you're righteous, you're not so righteous, you're obedient, slave of Allah. You're not so obedient. You're rich. You're poor. It doesn't matter. Every person is tested. Even prophets of Allah were tested. And they were tested the most. So if you think that your life is tough, think about the lives of prophets. If you think, if you think that you are, the sickness you have is a lot, think about the sickness of Ayub alayhi salam. And he, he suffered for 18 years. Not 8 years. 18 years. Think about Yaqub alayhi salam. He lost, he faced the loss of a child, Yusuf alayhi salam. He lost him when he was a baby, when he was very young. And the separation was so long. And think about the patience of Yaqub alayhi salam. He was patient all along. But then did Allah not reward him? Eventually they were united, right? And if you want to think about someone whose parents were lost, so think about Rasulullah He was an orphan. So you see, prophets of Allah, they suffered, all of them. And they suffered every kind of pain, every kind of test. So think about Rasulullah We talked about these five tests. So think about fear. Was there not fear in the life of Rasulullah Fear of enemies? Yes, all the time. Was there not hunger? Absolutely. Right? So you see, as believers, we should have this contentment. This is Allah's decision. It will not destroy me. My Rabb cannot have anything bad written for me. So we will definitely test you of these five things. And, and Bashir is Wabashir is Sabirin and good news for the patient ones. And who are those? You see, Rasulullah, whenever something good would happen, whenever he would something would happen that he's pleased with it, or you know, any accomplishment, what would he say? Alhamdulillah, he would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That praise is to Allah, who by his blessings all good things, all good things are perfected. So when you achieve anything, give credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah. Because with his blessing, all things, all good things happen. 
they are perfected, they are completed. And what was his reaction or what was his habit if something happened that displeased him? You know, and many times we, we face things in a day, so many things displeases us, upsets us, right? So what was his reaction? When he would, when something would happen and he would not like it, he would be displeased, what would he say? He would say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. He would not complain. He would not vent. He would not yell. He would not shout. He would not scream. He would say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Praises to Allah in all, all circumstances. You remember Allah and you praise Him then also. Okay. The next time when you're having a rough day and someone asks you, How are you? How's your day? You say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. It could have been worse, right? And when you when you think about it being worse, then you are grateful that Alhamdulillah, this blessing and not something worse. And you're also grateful because you are getting rewarded. Right? And also, we learn a beautiful dua that is taught to us that when a person suffers anything, any calamity, so what are they? Here are some unfortunate news, what should they say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon Allahumma junni fi musibati wa akhlif li khayram minha And when you say this dua, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you with something better. He will substitute something better for you. So maybe you lost your favorite bracelet or maybe something that you really loved. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah compensate me in my affliction. So yes, you know, you remind yourself that, okay, eventually I'm going to go back to Allah. I belong to Allah. And then you make dua. Oh Allah, compensate me in my affliction. Recompense my loss and give me something better in exchange for it. So take a screenshot maybe, or you can download an app for Iyak and Astain and you'll find all these duas over there. So, and we know that Um Salama was taught this dua. And Um Salama, when her husband passed away, Abu Salama, Rasulullah advised her to read this dua, to make this dua. And at that time, Um Salama thought that who could be better than Abu Salama? Because they had a very good relationship. He was a perfect husband. And she said this dua, but she, she thought that who could be better than Abu Salama? And what happened? She said that I repeated the same supplications and as the Rasulullah commanded me to do so, and Allah bestowed upon me a better substitute than Abu Salama, because she was married to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then. He proposed her. So you see, you may think that oh, what's next? This was the thing in my life. If I have lost this, then I cannot get anything else. But when, but imagine she became Ummahatul Mu'minin, mothers of the believers. And she thought that no one could be better than Abu Salama because he himself was a companion, a righteous person. So at times, you know, our thinking is very limited. We think that if I've lost this or this thing or nothing, no, we have to think out of the box. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for compensating us for our affliction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recompense us for our loss, for our losses in life. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards the sabirin, those who are patient. Especially when they suffer and they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiyawun. And, and what do we learn? Who are those people? Those who say, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiyawun. What is for them? We learn in ayah number 157 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Next, Ula'ika alayhim salawatum mir rabbihim. Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from the Lord. Wa rahma and mercy. So those people who say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun, and they are patient. So what is for them? Ula'ika alayhim salawat. For them is salawat mir rabbihim. From the Lord is salawat upon them. What is salawat? He knows salutation, we send it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here we are learning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending salawat upon them, blessings upon them, and mercy. You see, when, when, when the salawat 
is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that Allah praises such people. Allah praises such people. Those people who are in face of calamity, when they're patient and they remain patient and becoming patient doesn't mean that you, you yell and you whine and you complain and you cry out loud and then after many, many days you say, oh, I've been so patient. That's not patience. What did you learn? What is patience? Sadmatul ula. At the first stroke of the calamity, you hear something and you're patient. You hit a pause button or pause button. You take help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You pray. You take help with sabr and patience. You're patient and you take help from prayer. Then those people are praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises such people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his special mercy upon them. And they are, as a result, they are at ease. You know, have you, have you noticed certain people, they're going through so much in their life and you look at them and they look so chill. They just look so re relaxed and they're not even stressing out. And you wonder, how come you're so relaxed? How come they're so relaxed? Because you see, Allah's special mercy is upon them. They were patient and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered them in his mercy. And it is such people who are rightly guided. They are guided to say the right thing and do the right thing at the right time. They are successful people. They get the right words to say. They know how to control their emotions. Now, it doesn't mean that we all become, you know, feeling less or emotionless. No, that's not what it means. Because this feeling of emotions and feeling sad, these are, these are very human emotions. And we should have them. If we're really humans, we should have those emotions. But it's how we channelize those emotions. Right? We know Rasulullah Sallallahu he lost, when he lost his son Ibrahim in infancy, he was weeping. His eyes were shedding tears and Sahaba's companions were surprised and they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, you also cry? And what did he say? Yes, the heart is saddened. The eyes shed tears. But the tongue will only say what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you can feel pain in your heart. You can, you can weep also. You can cry also. But then you still remain patient. You don't complain. You realize that it happened from the degree of Allah who is my Rabb. Who knows the best. He's the best of planners. He has planned something better for me. And in this situation also, I'm getting something good out of it. If I remain patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises me in the company of angels and there's special mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you, you see, and you may wonder, why these tests? You know, why these tests have to come in a person's life? You see, why test? Because if there's no test, then there's no reward. Right? We all know, we all say no pain, no gain. Right? And if you think about dunya, in worldly things, in worldly pursuits, in order to get to a position, in order to be successful, what happened? We have to work really hard. If you, are to, if you want to win a game or tournament, there's so much practice that is involved, right? You have to work really hard. To be the best of the best in this world, you need to work hard. You need to, you need to study. You need to excel to be somewhere, right? Similarly, if you want to get higher reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be tested. And then when you're tested, when you are tested and these situations come in your life, when you're patient, then you're rewarded. So what kind of level of patience will you exhibit? Will you be content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you be radi? Radi to billah? I am pleased with Allah as my Rabb. And another level is, you see, one level is that you are you're patient. Okay, that's the bare minimum actually. Another level is that you are content. You're so content with the decree of Allah. You're not complaining, you're not questioning. And another level is that you're grateful. You're grateful for that loss or that, you know, that difficult times in your life. You're grateful. That's another level of patience. Right? And why are you grateful? Because you remind yourself that it could have been worse. So you're grateful. Or you're grateful because you are expecting the reward from Allah. Right? So you're either patient and you're just patient. 
Next level is that you're content. You're happy. And another level is that you're grateful. That Alhamdulillah, this challenge came, came in my life. And if I was not tested this way and this challenge, I was not challenged this way in my life, perhaps I would not have been connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or maybe I would not have realized certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted me to realize by going through this test in my life. It's very easy to just keep keep staying in the past and, you know, let the past haunt us. But the way to go is, move forward is, think about the goodness that came out of it. Think about all the good things that came out of it. What all you learned from that experience. So those people who are patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise them and send his special mercy upon them. And they are guided. They are guided from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and you see we learn in a hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, strange is a case of a believer and there is good for him in everything. And this is only for a believer. Strange is a case of a believer. If a blessing reaches him, he is grateful to Allah, which is good for him. So if something good happens, you're grateful. You say, Alhamdulillah, you're grateful and you get reward for it. And if an adversity reaches him, he's patient, which is good for him. You see? So as a believer, we have win-win situation no matter what. We have blessings. We are grateful. We get reward for it. We have some adversity reaching us. We are patient and it's good for us. We get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We get praises from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We get the mercy of rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see, a believer, but this is only for a believer. You see the hadith, وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ This is only for a believer. Win-win situation, no matter what we are going through. But you see, shaitan wants us to always feel sad and depressed. So we cannot focus on our salawat. We cannot be productive human beings by just dwelling in our past all the time, repeating the, repeating the same episode again and again, getting the sympathies of people. Right? No, we need, we need to rise above this. And be grateful for all those experiences, all those bad experiences, because truly it could have been worse. And alhamdulillah for all those ajar and reward that we gain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we were patient. And all the learning. Many times a person goes through hardships and they become close to Allah. What a great blessing is that. Imagine if they, you know, they say YOLO. You know, you all know young people in the audience. You know YOLO, you only live once. So imagine we only live once. And imagine if we come in this world and we leave this world and we spend while living in this world, we live a very heedless life. We never recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what a waste. As opposed to someone who's living a heedless life and then they are, there's turbulence in their life. They get shaken up and then they turn back to Allah and their life changes. They recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they start doing what their Rabb wants them to do. They start leading, leading the life the way Allah wants them to leave, lead. And they leave the world while Allah is pleased with them. And they leave the world with lots of good deeds in their account. What is better? Of course, this person, maybe the hardship became, some, became a means for them to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what a great blessing. Sometimes hardships also become great blessings for us. Especially if we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through those hardships. So alhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am, in hadith Qudsi, he says, I am as my servant thinks of me. So in testing times, in difficult situations, think positive about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That yes, I am going through this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take me out. There's some khayt that will come out of it. There has to be some good in it for me. Because I am as my servant thinks of me. Whatever you expect. Allah can, Allah has a lot and he can give us a lot. His treasures doesn't diminish. So think highly of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like when you go in front of the king, you won't ask him for a dollar, would you? No, that would be an insult. Like, why? Because you know the king has a lot. He can give you a lot. He has the power, his authority. He has all, all that money to give you. So think about Allah, who is the king of all the kings. Who is Rabbil Alameen, Lord of the universe. So when you think about him, think highly of him. 
Don't limit yourself. We only we limit ourselves. There's no limitation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask him. And he can give because he has a lot and he can give. So I am as my servant thinks of me. Sometimes we limit, we restrict ourselves our, our, by ourselves. That I can never do this. I can never achieve this. This good can never come in my life. Oh, this thing I can never achieve. That person can never come around. No, we put limitation. Think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good, goodly of him. He said, I am as my servant thinks of me. So think big. Think big. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this month is the month of dua. So make duas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua to lift all the afflictions. Make dua for turning our sorrows into happiness. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, you see, we ask for Jannatul Pridaus. And you know, when you ask for Jannatul Pridaus, and this last point, and we'll end here, you see, and we should ask for Jannatul Pridaus because we've been told that when you ask for Jannah, ask for Jannatul Pridaus because that's the highest level of Jannah, right? So you and I, we ask for Jannatul Pridaus from Allah. We want the highest level of Jannah, isn't it? And Jannatul Pridaus is the highest level above which is the throne of Allah, the Arsh of Allah subhanahu That's the highest you can get in the next world. Above which is the throne of Allah. The closest you can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you and I, we want Jannah, isn't it? So do you think that you will be given Jannah without being tested? Without, without any turbulence and difficult times in your life? Without, being, without your patience being tested? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ahasiban nasu ayn yutraku ayn yakulu amanna wahum la yuftanun do the people think that they will be left to say we believe and they will not be tested? So if you say I believe in Allah, you think you will not be tested? You will be tested. We will be tested. And then what is the test? Do we remain patient? Do we still remain grat grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we still remain grateful, obedient people? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create ease in our, in our life and we remember that our stay in this world is very short, right? How long can a person live? Maximum 100, 120. What did Rasulullah Sassam say? The average age of my ummah is 60 to 70, right? And very few go beyond that. So this transitory life of this world, think about this life versus the life that we have in the grave and then eventually Day of Judgment, which is 50,000 years long, and then the life of eternity. So from this few number days that we have on earth, we are getting our Jannah. We are buying our Jannah, right? So every time we do any good action, we are patient or we are doing, we are doing our salawat, we are doing our fasting, or we are giving our charity, any good action we do, we get multiple reward. We know that minimum reward we get is 10 and maximum 700. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward us many, many more times also. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to remember these lessons, right lessons at the right time, that we hear of a, of a sad news or some loss, and we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. And we make the dua, Allahumma junni fi musubati, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recompense me from this musibah. Give me something better. Okay. So Jazakumullah Khayyim Kathira for Nisa Helpline for arranging this beautiful session because we know when we collectively remember Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers remember us in a gathering which is better than the gathering of this dunya. Right? In the gathering of angels. So inshallah we, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and write this time that we have spent together learning some verses of the Quran as ibadah worship for us, right? And Jazak Jazak Mulakhin and Kathira, I pray that Nisa Helpline uh, keep making this positive influence and change in people's life. And uh, like I said, that any good action we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards multiple times and Ramadan is the month of doing good actions. So I uh, I will urge you guys to always, um, as you're giving charity everywhere, also give some charity in this launch good campaign of Nisa Home also. We give $1 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can multiply it to 700 times. So giving one dollar and you in the year after you can get you can reap the reward of seven hundred dollars seven hundred times more right so uh, inshallah 
we'll end here. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Ashadu la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. I will give the mic to the volunteers. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Sister Abir, that was so beautiful and so helpful. And inshallah, I hope that everybody who was listening was listening to her beautiful words and subhanAllah, the Quran and all of the guidance that it has. Um, so Jazakallah khair again for these um, valuable words. As you mentioned, we have our fundraiser going on and a little bit more about Nisa Helpline. Um, it is on the front lines of supporting our sisters one call at a time. And this is the year to just support Nisa Helpline. As women, we face our day-to-day -day challenges and compounded with COVID-19 impacts, this ranges from work-life balance, financial restraints, mental health management, relationship strain, and so much more. Um, so NISA Helpline has recently had a spike in incoming calls. This past month, the, the Helpline has experienced a 225% increase in calls. That's a lot of people who need help, and that's a lot of sisters who need someone to listen to them. Um, and this is all in the midst of lockdowns and quarantines. And this is throughout North America, not just Canada, not just the US, but all around North America. For the helpline to continue to support our vulnerable women in our community, they need your help so we can fulfill our collective responsibility and be a part of the solution. During this present month, please donate to NISA Helpline through Launch Good campaign through our Launch Good campaign at launchgood.com slash NISA Helpline Ramadan. Again, that's launchgood.com at NISA Helpline slash NISA Helpline Ramadan. It would be so helpful and you would not only be helping us at NISA Helpline, but helping more women around the world so that we don't miss one unanswered so that we do not miss one call and leave a call unanswered. Um, thank you so much, Sister Abir, once again. And thank you so much um, to all who are listening. And um, if you have any questions or any, um, you know, anything you would like to comment, please feel, to, feel free to go to our social medias and DM us or go ahead and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so, Asalaamu Alaikum, everyone.